Welcome to another TS16 Leica Total Station tutorial and in today's video I'm going to go through the settings, we're going to have a look at some icons, I'm going to show you the prisms and at the end of the video I'm going to open a new job. So let's have a look. So if you watch my last video here I had a look through that settings, I covered uh, all this here and today I'm going to be actually working with the top icons here as I mostly going to be jumping using this one. So first one here gonna be telling us about aim and search here as you can see this is manually now but we can set it here as auto aiming, search and lock, weight and lock, filter learn and the, we can use a power search. We're gonna be obviously using a power search mostly when we're gonna be working with a prism. You can see here it even changed now for the prism but uh, I'm gonna jump here in the second. That's what we're gonna be accessing from here, from the top left icon. And then uh, I'm gonna set it as a manual aiming. I want it as a manual aiming. I'm gonna set it now and that's how it's gonna be. So we're manually operating our total station. So the next one here gonna be measure and targets. And in here, we're gonna be changing the measure mode and the targets as well. So as you can see here, I can change to measure any surface. And that icon here actually is changing for that small little house. And number one here means that the instrument gonna be measuring only once. So as you can imagine, there's a few options. We can actually make an instrument to measure a few times and take the average, but once here is well enough for us. And that's how I'm gonna leave it. We can also change here for measuring continuously and as you can see that icon changed here a little bit so to be honest once you're going to work a little bit with Leica you're going to see that icon you're going to know what settings you got actually but I'm going to go back to the single shot and also from here we can turn on and off the laser and you'll see now that's changing as well for the laser so we know that our laser is on uh, this is also good to know sometimes we forget we got the laser on so you can have a look the laser on just turn it off obviously this is taking our battery so we always have to be thinking about the battery unless we got plenty of batteries spare and very important thing here we're going to be accessing the targets so the targets here uh, there was a any surface and what's the most important thing when we're going to be using the targets guys please make sure you know what targets you are using as i seen already mistakes with it and once again we want to make sure we're using the correct target and in here it's actually very good as well as you can see i'm going to use a leica prism 23.1 millimeter constant and you're going to find that information on the prism itself so if you're confused if you're not sure just double check your prism make sure you got the same information on the prism as here on the instrument the good thing about this is once i change this here i'm going to press okay you see that prism here to show you this i just maybe change quickly for leica mini prism here leica mini zero so you probably see this one yeah so it's actually representing here how the prism is looking so that's another one good thing i'm telling you just to keep an eye on top there so the next one that instrument here we can actually access a bubble here which we're going to be often using and we can change the faces here so wherever you want to change the face you want to do another measuring with the other face that's the place to do it and then we got the level bubble here so i'm going to press here yeah it's perfect that's what we want i think we've seen that uh, on the other video so that's okay uh, and i told you about that laser you can see that is running here so i'm going to turn it off despite obviously i'm not running any battery out as this is a simulator but i'm going to take the laser off and for the laser on and off i'll typically use a button on the keyboard and that's going to be mostly as well from that cs20 controller so another information we got here on top, that's the angles, actually current angles. And then we got the distance, distance to the target, so to the point we are measuring and the slope distance as well. So that's also useful too. And that add here, you can go online here. We got a Bluetooth, Leica Exchange, BMI 36 Docs. I've never used it and I don't think many people using this. Leica Exchange might be good, but you need a subscription for it and that's gonna be costing you money. Maybe on some jobs that would be actually useful to get that information in and out, but let's be honest about it. Even the survey we are doing on site, we can always take to the USB, USB to the phone and we can send it. So I don't really think it's worth the money, depending on the job, obviously. And the last one is a battery here and we're gonna have a battery level here, but we can access a few more things as well. Change TS to GS, I'm not gonna be doing here i'm covering only the total station we work in here on site using total station only and uh, the home here obviously that's going to bring me back to the main menu screen uh, you've seen before help please help i don't need any help here and battery and memory here is quite useful as apart from battery obviously we can check how much 
space we got on the USB or on the SD card and the internal memory as well. So uh, I'm gonna go back to this one and we got the camera. So we can actually access camera here as well. It might be useful uh, as I said before, where we're doing some measurings or we just wanna keep the screen and then use it maybe on some drawing or maybe even put it as our job photo. So the next thing is the sketch pad. Uh, and as you remember guys, every engineer should have a tape measure, calculator and a notebook with something to write on. So by any chance, if you forget it, you can use this one here so you can write something here, some information, whatever. But I really recommend you to use just the paper, really. So I'm gonna go back to the main menu and we're gonna open a new job. So there is a few options. We can actually open a job from here when we go points and lines data and we can jump here to the job we got and we can create a new job from here. But the easiest way actually gonna be use our carousel here and then we're gonna tap here to create a new job. So it's very easy, it's like for children really. So just tap here, uh, name, description and everything. So maybe I'm just gonna put the site inch control here, uh, description, uh, maybe main control. And creator, uh, I'm gonna put my name here. Uh, some things might be actually useful, as on some jobs, it might be two engineers using one EDM. So I would actually prefer to keep it this way, where I know I created the job and that's my job. Obviously, they can still mix within your job, but at least I know this is my job. Obviously, I probably would still double check it, but that's how I prefer it. And then we got display in the job carousel. Yeah, I wanna display there. Obviously, I'm gonna be accessing from that carousel after storing job, capture and image to display in the home screen. So that's what I said. You could actually use uh, the image there to keep it as your job, but I don't need it now. So I'm gonna store it now. And that's my job here, as you can see in Carousel. And guys, that will be all in today's video. I hope you enjoy it. We went through all the settings now and we actually open a new job. And in the next video tutorials, obviously we're gonna be creating the points. We're gonna be importing data in and out the instrument. And then later we're gonna be doing all the rest like stakeout, reference line surveying and all the stuff. So thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to leave the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well.